If you are a subscriber to my channel, you're aware that I cover what I consider the most disturbing media on the planet. And as the channel has evolved, we learned about progressively more terrible and nightmarish things that exist in our world, and are often passed around online. Most horror stories nowadays are based around the dark web. That is, because in reality, the dark web is where much of the most heinous illegal activity online is actually conducted. Some people see it as a looking glass into hell that people fear, people hope and pray that they never have to see. The hell that they think they go to after death. Well, there is some truth to that. Gore is something of an enigma. Most people are revolted by it. Others use it to troll other people, and for some it's fascination. The concept of death is fascinating, and it's nothing new to humankind. The study and often sensationalized concept of death can be traced back pretty much as far back as recorded history itself. Internet gore really is no different. And for the most part, regardless of your moral compass and how it makes you feel, it's harmless. All news media, true crime media, video games, and even some books and music all, in some shape or form, exploit death. This virtue signal is among the weakest used against myself and other content creators that cover this type of content, in hopes to brigade morally. Hypocrisy is nothing new for humanity as well. With internet gore, it is usually events long gone, unless of course the video is new, regardless of whether it's a tragic accident, a cartel execution, or otherwise. And unless it's used maliciously, like sending gore to someone without consent, then again, typically the media itself isn't harming anyone. And the uploading, viewing, and possession of gore media is actually legal in the US because typically it falls under a freedom of speech and press type category. Think of it as being somewhere in between, as it's real documented media. So naturally, despite its stigma and often grotesque nature, gore has inspired many communities over the years, more or less in the darkest corners of the world and eventually the internet. Gore aficionados predate the internet by far though, as do exploitation films, faux snuff films, and sensationalized gore media in general. In more recent times, a far more human and professional approach to extreme cinema and exploitative media has been seen, highlighting the work of Future Productions, for example, run by Jonathan Doe of the YouTube channel Cinema's Underbelly. A tasteful and knowledgeable insight into real-life true crime, crime scene tours, and extreme cinema Cinema's Underbelly is a gem hidden on the platform for this type of content, often collaborating with the owner of cult collectibles to discuss very real murderbilia items across multiple channels, and then Disturb Reality, who is a brother channel to my own, primarily focusing cartel-related gore media in a more professional, traditional true crime style narrative rather than my own. But even if there are good people in this community, it's seldom said that there are just as many bad people, if not far more, given the content in question. And if you've been in the know for long enough, or just a fan of my channel, by now you've seen how far people will go just to push the boundaries and social norms of even the most extreme content. A haunting fear I've previously stated time and time again is that as time goes on, and these groups grow and indulge, they ultimately will seek more extreme content to shock, to impress, or to simply satisfy their desires for it. Some seek fame, but ultimately are exposed within their shame for their disgusting selves. But what I think is most frightening, out of everything I've seen and continue to keep seeing, is how many truly sadistic people there are in the world. The types of people you read about in creepypasta, the kind of people your parents warned you about. Literally. There are truly things out there that you think wouldn't be real, but they're very real. 
Dr. Gloves, who went by Master on gore sites as well, was among the most shocking thing I've seen before. It wasn't necessarily what he posted, but it was his pride in it, his confidence in what he was doing that shocked me. Dr. Gloves was an active original content submitter to various gore sites. Original content on a gore site. How does that sound to you? Well, Dr. Gloves most likely chose his name because of the black elbow length medical gloves he used at his job as a child mortician at a hospital in California. The things he would upload were abominable. Trays of children's brains, miscarriages, and terminated pregnancies, just to name a few. Mirror selfies of himself holding a baby by the throat like a dead game animal. But the most horrifying thing I saw were the photos of him around living children. Living children, and children that were freshly dead or incapacitated. And even one child was screaming in a playpen while he mocked them. These posts were eventually reported to the FBI and attempts to identify Dr. Gloves were made online by Gore Communities, Reddit, and presumably 4chan as well. An alleged identification was made, and a report made to the assumed hospital at which Dr. Gloves was alleged to be working at. Authorities were also informed, and around this time is when Dr. Gloves went dark. But the alarming thing was what the FBI found. According to them, while the media was immoral and distasteful, it is not classified as illegal. No arrests were made. I've heard talk of him posting under one of his other known usernames on the dark web, but there is no telling if that's true or not, as I have not seen proof. No mention of Dr. Gloves or Master has come up in any recent findings or research of mine either. The man in the photos was not arrested, and if he was, it was not publicized, nor related to the panic that stirred the communities online that literally watch people die. Then in August of 2021, I would cover two mixtapes from the dark web. I was told no animal content, no illegal content, but it should be, or something of that sort when I asked about what it entailed. I decided I should react blind to both of them, as reactions to mixtapes were quite popular and I felt I could stomach anything. Just how bad could it be? The first one was the worst mixtape I have ever seen. Pushing boundaries and of course obscene and sometimes illegal material is nothing new on the dark web. Even beyond the internet. Sadists, pedophiles, zoophiles, these sorts of people have always sought out and recorded disturbing things. While not illegal, the Amber Alert mixtape is arguably one of the most horrifying compilations of child abuse material on the internet. It's so bad that it is banned from clearnet gore sites, along with its sister mixtapes, Suffer Little Children, and presumably, Lovely Savages Mix. Amber Alert is just over 30 minutes long and contains things I had never thought I would see until then. Toddlers being trampled, thrown, tasered. And it ends with a post from a Chan bore where a self-admitted child predator gives a brief description of the infamous Daisy's destruction video. Amber Alert was leaked onto the clear web shortly before I released my first video about it, but allegedly was made by a group called The Collective. And it was this mixtape that opened my eyes to the reality of the world. And while that sounds incredibly corny, I know. But coming from an all too common background of childhood abuse, being numb to the sight of death and ultimately coming face to face with the most triggering media I've ever seen, it made me realize some things. The amount of people who seek pleasure through the suffering of others is immense. And sadism carries a broad spectrum of people with it, the morbidly curious are harmless. But there are genuine child predators that thrive on even just the violence inflicted upon children in this media. I would go as far as to say that there are more child predators than normal people in this world. And when you think at just how many people actually just abuse their children in general, it also vastly outnumbers the people who protect their own kids. Or at least it seems that way. 
Stories of how teens and young adults are kidnapped, trafficked, and their assaults recorded and sold are voiced in our society in a near sarcastic sense of deterring our kids from endangering themselves. While in reality, the main source of child exploitation media on the internet comes from the parents, family members, teachers, babysitters, and so on. Victimizing these children and trading content online. And violent material is sometimes no different. A lot of confusion and anger erupted over the Amber Alert mixtape, and its elusiveness led to the speculation of its existence. Within this time, a user popped up in my Discord under the name Skin Face. Presumably a fan of my content, he possibly still is due to some references I've noticed. But he would DM me about mixtapes and other gore clips, and I would ignore them. He eventually was banned from my Discord. No reason why was given, and I do not recall why he was banned exactly. Around this time, there would be a lot of people who would try to dump gore and other things that aren't allowed on the server. I presume that was the case with Skinned Face. Sometime in early 2022, though, Skin Face would pop up as a user named Ripper and would make somewhat of a name for himself when he was banned from the new best gore domain. For a while, he would just be an active user, uploading standard gore clips and mixtapes like MD Pope and Welcome to Bleaksville. But then he uploaded something he created himself. A mixtape I recall him talking to me about as well, I think, called Diabolus. I again will clarify my policy in content creation is that I never accept media from strangers. The offering of this media and obsession over extreme gore were huge red flags for me to begin with. I never viewed or downloaded anything from this user. I also never download, view, listen to, or otherwise obtain or distribute any illegal material or media involving children. While within the confines of the law I do discuss these immoral and terrifying topics, I have a common moral standard when it comes to gore, and it's shared with many of you. Child content and animal content is detestable and disgusting, but it does exist. A Reddit user described the Diabolus mixtape as a ton of child abuse and the Pseudoscorpion album mixed into it. The thought of dodging that bullet still gives me chills to this day. If I were to have viewed that, I would have exposed myself to more horrific child abuse content, as well as the horrific audio of CSAM. A loophole people like Ripper use is that in the US, child exploitation material usually only classifies as visual material like photo and video, so audio is typically legal. I made a video about Pseudoscorpion, and I hesitated on any updates about it out of fear of spreading it due to a legality loophole. But regardless, my silence hasn't stopped anything. It's been uploaded to YouTube numerous times. Pseudoscorpion is an audio album of various noise tracks mixed in with the audio of various child exploitation content. Exactly what kind of content, I don't know. From what I heard, though, the first track is the anal rape of a nine-year-old. While it's technically legal, it is something I never would suggest viewing, downloading, or looking for. Ripper would not stop with Diabolus, nor would he remain within the confines of the law when it came to his future mixtapes. And in late March of 2022, on the GoreDB site, Ripper would begin posting a large amount of child abuse, as well as Amber Alert and its other sister mixtapes. He would garner the attention of a few subreddits with people saying how extreme the GoreDB site was, since the first thing you saw when you opened the site at the time because of him would just be animal abuse and child abuse. Basically, it was saturated, to the point where it was allegedly called a softcore hurtcore site. The term is rather ignorant in truth, but given the severity of the content being uploaded, it is no surprise that people would try to set it in its own category of websites. The website was eventually shut down for some time because Ripper would upload two mixtapes he created, Cicada 3301 and Love Zone. Love Zone was regarded by brave, sadistic viewers as an Amber Alert copycat of sorts, but with the audio of child exploitation added in. 
Cicada 3301 on the other hand. The name taken directly from the Cicada 3301 ARG that first popped up on 4chan back in 2012 was a mixtape that allegedly contained the entire Daisy's Destruction video and other CSAM videos. The first mixtape of its kind to be heard of, at least on the clear net, and the general public. This forced GoreDB to shut down, and Ripper was effectively banned among all clearnet gore sites. This was already horrifying enough, but it got even worse. Ripper then would go about posting copious amounts of animal and child abuse content to gore flicks, but then he did something different. This guy literally began to make creepypastas reality and posted child necrophilia content and began opening up about his opinions on children, calling them cum dumps and describing how he would like to torture a child. His reputation began to almost become synonymous with other horrific individuals. When his name popped up, people would ask questions. And a sort of interview was captured on Goreflix with someone questioning Ripper under the screen name Kindergarten, one of his many aliases he uses, and another user named Pigsy. The conversation went as follows. The format is a little sloppy, but given the nature of the content, I don't think that should matter. Should you need to pause for this and go revisit the video to read this, just be warned of the disturbing nature of this conversation. Ripper would comment on any clip containing a child, and would sexualize them in horrific ways. Attempts to expose him in the gore communities were made when a thread popped up on the site titled R.I.P. Ripper, containing proof of Ripper distributing a hurt gore mixtape. He would go on to get banned from other small gore domains for the same reasons as before, 
and Goreflix followed suit with other sites and changed their policy to no animal or child abuse content, but allegedly still allowed zoophilia content for whatever reason. By July, on a site called Watch People Die, Ripper would join and begin uploading child abuse content once again. This pattern would always continue, but this is where Ripper set himself apart from just being an edgelord posting extreme gore and zoo sadist content. After he was banned, a thread emerged asking why is Ripper so heavily frowned upon in the community, stating that he's basically just a creep, but it was revealed that he is also known on the dark web as well, and not just on gore boards, but the very same website that some of the world's most infamous child predators belong to, hurt to the core. Ripper goes by numerous names online. Skin Face, Ripper, Candy, and Kindergarten to name a few. He is responsible for making the previous two mixtapes which got him banned from GoreDB, Love Zone, and Cicada 3301. But Ripper also made three other mixtapes which are pure child sexual abuse material. Hurt Core mixtapes to collect and trade as he now markets himself as he offers the most horrendous compilations for free. Anonymous screenshots have shown posts allegedly coming from Hurt to the Core by the user Candy, posting the Don't Cry mixtape. New Hurt Core only mixtape. This mixtape is focused around baby rape, heart abuse, all crying. 14 minutes in length, 50 megabytes in size. Thank you all for the support and apologies that I couldn't re-upload much. This will be the final mixtape of this nature for now. There was also a post describing a new audio Hurt Court mix by Ripper called Daycare. Notably, this one is using what appears to be a Dr. Gloves photo as the cover. New album. An album filled with the sounds of Hurt Court and abuse. Techno music with CP sounds mixed in. Length, 7 minutes. Size, 8.3 megabytes. Album named Daycare. Track 1, Destruction, a techno track sampling only Daisy's destruction. Track 2, Daughter, a techno track sampling many classic Hurtcore videos. Track 3, Desire, a techno track sampling the sounds of abuse as well as some CP. Judging by the date of the Don't Cry post, it would appear that this is the most recent creation of Rippers. There are two others called Playhouse and Wonderland as well. Ripper openly discusses his fantasies of violating and torturing children, and given his history and activities on the very same site, or at least its most recent incarnation where people like Peter Scully were active, was haunting in itself. Also alarmingly, he alluded to possibly knowing Peter Scully. Now that could just be edgelording, but given the nature of everything, would it be that shocking? He is a danger to any children he may be around, and given his track record so far, we can only assume he will push the narrative on just how far he can go with what kind of horrible shit he can upload. He single-handedly made creepypasta, like Snuffar73, a reality by bringing child necrophilia out onto the clear net. He revels in the reputation that Amber Alert and Zoo Sadist media like YLYM garnered and views them as inspirational pieces. His knowledge of CSAM videos is horrifying. This is the real boogeyman of the dark web. He allegedly was active in a thread on Hurt to the Core titled, How to Properly Torture a Child, asking how he could torture a child in the way to inflict the worst pain possible. A Redditor also claimed that Ripper may be behind an all zoo sadism mixtape called Animal's Nightmare, which is a reference to an infamous zoo sadist website. And for me personally, Ripper is one of the most haunting figures I have ever encountered in my life. This post on the clear net, so cocky in his post that he even uses what appears to be a screenshot of my Amber Alert thumbnail as his profile picture. Children, mostly taller, were ranged 2 to 5. I would first get my hands on the little one, kidnapping, babysitting, etc. Then once I get a child, I rape it until there's nothing left, all holes bloodied, 
Once the little one is crying and suffering from the pain I've inflicted, I would begin dismembering them piece by piece while they're still alive. Enough to feel the pain so they could truly suffer. The sparkle in their youthful eyes begins to fade away as they are screaming for their mommy, until they are completely closed and die in my arms. No one has identified Ripper. Other aliases he is known to use are Candy with three Ys in Kindergarten. Any information leading to his identity should be reported to the FBI tip line and other tip lines in the description of this video. To me, Ripper is honestly a very scary figure, and a lot of this, what he says, I mean, yeah, on the surface just looks like heavy edge lording, but whether that's true or not, some facts still remain are that one, he's distributing illegal, disgusting fucking material, CSAM, that's child exploitation. That's shit like Daisy's Destruction. The A and E interchanging in those terms is what makes that different. CSEM is child exploitation material. Traditional, oh, that's a fucking fucked way to put it, but stereotypical CP, so to speak, whereas CSAM involves violence. It's hurtcore. That's fucking disgusting. I mean, no matter which way you turn it, it's disgusting. But the things he says are very alarming. Do I believe he knows Peter Scully or knew Peter Scully? No, to be honest with you, I don't. I believe he's lying. I believe he's a sick fuck and he's a liar as well. That's irrelevant, though. It doesn't matter what I think about him. Any information should be submitted to the authorities because what he's doing is not only highly illegal, but dangerous and disgusting. And all in all, in the end of all of this, someone could actually really get hurt, because who knows who or what he'll fucking hurt and upload just to try to get an edge in on content or make the next mixtape or whatever the fuck his goals are. And in my opinion, his goals are solely focused around sadism and just self-pleasure and gratification. He does like the attention, and no doubt he'll like this video, and that's the double-edged sword I must face. I've been asked to cover this topic for a long time, and until I've seen some of this evidence myself, I was kind of in... Well, I suppose I'm guilty of shrugging the topic off as an edgelord being an edgelord, but it only turned out to be someone who would make some creepypastas real and bring some of my worst fucking omens about the future of the internet to reality. I've given warnings about this, and many other people predictably have as well, as to people seeking extreme content and making more extreme content to satisfy the ever-growing desire for more and more extreme content. But this, seeing this person do this, and make these things a reality, so swiftly after I make statements like that, is among the most disturbing things I've ever seen in my life. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you for supporting my content. If you're watching this on Patreon, an extra special thanks to you as well. Be sure to join me on Twitch every Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And also, check out the Patreon for early releases and 12 plus hours of content not on YouTube. Again, thank you so much for watching. I researched and discussed the darkest media on the planet. I compiled the worst of the worst I could think of into the horror of the world. I found more. Throw wide the gates of hell.